Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and this is going to be my review for Justified Season 5, Episode 11, The Toll. And this episode for me was good. I still thought it was a really great episode. However, um, it was not as good as I thought it was going to be. The promos for this episode really overhyped things, and I felt like this episode wasn't as good as the promos, you know, made it out to be. Um, but this was a pretty big, like, game-changing episode, especially, you know, the, the, um, you know, the whole plot and everything. Um, so, uh, let's just, uh, let's just get into this episode, because I enjoyed this one, I did. I enjoyed the way this, I enjoyed this episode, but it wasn't as good as last week's. However, it still was a very good episode. And I do really like the direction they're going with, uh, a lot of the storylines. So, we first see Art, who guards Allison at her home and tells her to get moving on her packing, and she says, They can't give official protection since there is no credible threat, but it's just a precaution. And she asks if Raylan's okay, and Art tells her that he is. She asks if Raylan is worried that the crows will um, come after her again, and asks if it will help to tell the crows they broke up, and to tell the crows that they broke up. And Allison tells Art that Raylan mentioned he punched him in the eye but wouldn't tell him why. He asks if he admitted to hitting Raylan, could she consider it child abuse and take custody of Raylan from him? He takes her suitcase and, and heads out into the hall. Someone takes a shot at him. And then Art returns fire, you know, someone's shooting. Out of nowhere, um, someone just shoots Art, and he shoves Allison back into the, the apartment. He thinks that she got shot, but actually, he was the one, um, that got shot. And, um, Raylan's with, um, Art's wife, Leslie, and she tells him, uh, West Palm is a good place since there are benches there. And, um, and since there are beaches. She says it will be good for the cabin fever. You know, he's still trying to find where to go here while he's in Florida. He's still trying to figure out where to go. And she says the first six months are hard. Raylan says he doesn't, he didn't think of it, but it makes sense. He says that her mother's nearby. She, he, she tells Raylan he's not where he's needed and can do the most good. She asks him why Art was alone with no backup. She asks why he wasn't there with Art. And she says she wants to know why he wasn't there. She doesn't know about the whole, um, the whole thing happening with Art and her, you know, Art and Raylan. She doesn't know about that whole thing. Um, they go into the hospital. There are cops everywhere. Leslie hugs Rachel. And yes, Rachel and Tim are back in this episode, which is great, because I always love when Rachel and Tim are in episodes. Um, Leslie hugs Rachel. She asks if he's alive, and the doctor says he's extremely critical. And Dr. Patel takes Leslie to his office. Tim tells Raylan that Art lost a lot of blood and had to be revived. And Raylan asks if Allison saw anything to help, and Tim says she's shaken up, and Art knocked her to the floor. The three marshals stop down the hall to discuss who it was. They think it could be Daryl looking for payback on Theo or Theotonin since Art shot him. Um, you know, they're thinking it's one of those two people. Um, they're looking for Daryl, but the whorehouse is shut down. Rachel says he's on the run, and, Ray and Raylan asks why he'd even known to be on the run. And Tim says that they still need to consider it may not be Daryl, but Raylan isn't having it. So Rachel tells Raylan that Ed Kirkland from Detroit is coming in to run the office, and she thinks he'll go after Theo. Um, basically, he's taking Raylan's place um, right now, because, you know, Raylan decided, said, I will come back on my own time, so this guy's kind of taking his place. And um, Tim tells him Kirkland will be there in an hour, and he doesn't want, and he wants to head out with Raylan to hunt down Daryl while they still can. And Raylan asks if that's what Art would want and tells him he doesn't think he knows Art as well and Raylan does. So Raylan comes into uh, the Marshal's office and he heads into Art's office. Obviously Art's not there because he's in the hospital. And Allison is asleep on Art's sofa. He rustles, he rustles some papers on Art's desk and offers her something to help her sleep. And she says the EMTs... Uh, gave her something about didn't work. He tells her they didn't know about her tolerance. She asks how long she needs to be there. And he sits down and explains that in the morning they will send her to the hotel under guard where she will stay until they find the shooter or she's no longer a target. And Allison cries and tells Raylan that she's really sorry about Art, but he tells her that she has nothing to be sorry for. He leaves and tells her to get some sleep. And I do like that even though they're not together, they still have that bond between each other. They're still friends and you still, you know, like their scenes together. I still, I still enjoy their scenes, definitely. Um, so then Raylan asks Kirkland to let him join the manhunt, but he says he needs Raylan there as his right hand. He tells him he wants to go after Tonin, and Raylan tells him that the first priority for the manhunt, um, for the, for the new chief is to reign in the, in the office, problem child, like, keeping an eye on him, 
and he knows that he's a problem child. And Kirkland says he can't have him compromise the investigation. Raylan says uh, keeping him off the job will stop him from finding the guy. The attorney comes in and tells him that Tonin confessed to ordering the hit as revenge and even says he'll finger the shooter for them. And he even signed an, an affidavit and uh, Raylan is incredulous. So then, uh, back at the office, Raylan tells Kirkland that he has to know this is bullshit, and Kirkland takes a call, and Tim shows the attorney a file on Catherine Hale, you know, that one that was with, um, Wynn and Picker, and also with, um, with Raylan in that last, in that one episode. They go off to talk about it, and Raylan heads in to talk to Picker, and tells him he wants a name, and Picker has no clue, and tells him that they have a special relationship. Raylan says that it's done, and Picker offers his condolences. Um... Raylan tells him that Theo fingered him as the shooter and they have all the proof they need. Picker asks proof, um, what proof they have and Raylan says he'll see it in court. And he gives, he says he'll give 40 of Art lives and the death penalty if he died. So Picker reminds him he, he played, when he played ball, Raylan tells him to give him a name. And Picker says he's not a snitch and Raylan says he is an affidavit that, um, an affidavit that says, uh, different. And Picker tells him he heard it was Daryl Crow, so it was Daryl who did it, and Kirkland comes in and tells Picker to find Daryl for them, and he offers Picker future prizes to be named Leo. Now, I honestly thought it was Daryl, you know, the second I, they said Daryl, I'm like, it's probably Daryl. Um, then we see that they, uh, they, um, they show Kirkland's security footage that clears Picker, but then another guy tells Randy he has an important call, and it's Wendy, and she wants to know... She wants him to know that Daryl will surrender, you know, d luckily Wendy's still alive. I thought that Daryl knocked her out, you know, dead last episode, but she's alive. And, um, basically she wants to know, she wants him to know that Daryl will surrender, but only to Raylan. Rachel brings Catherine in to see David. They seem to know each other. She sits and he says he didn't ask her to. And she calls him a little smug little hobbit who told the jury that her late husband was a savage and she was worse. She, he asked Rachel if she told her why she was with winning Catherine. She says she was visiting an old friend, and Catherine tells David she's just a little old country grandma now, and he says it doesn't look that way. She tells him her lawyer's on the way and threatens a harassment suit. David tells her he just wanted to see her for old time's sake, and Catherine tells him he's disappointed that he's still alive, and um, he demands to know where he is. Um, so, you know, and he says he and he says a little bit. So, Raylan comes to Wendy's and sees that her face is still all beaten up. She looks in, she's in very bad shape. Um, and he asks if she came alone, if he came alone, and he didn't. He asks where Daryl is, and she tells him that she had no choice because he has Kendall. And he tells her to sit on the bed. She arranged the meeting, but he's not there. And Wendy says that Daryl's afraid he'll shoot him on sight. And she tells him Daryl's the only brother she has left, and he demands to know where he is. Um, Daryl steps out of the elevator at the marshal's office, holds up his hands, calls out his name, and he guess he didn't think Raylan would let him in quietly, and he's got Kendall with him, and Tim tells him someone to get the kid away from him, and Daryl's got about ten guns on him and drops down to his knees meekly. So then Kendall is with Wendy in the conference room, and Kirkland and David come out of interrogation, and Wendy tells them she wants to see her brother, and starts talking lawyer stuff. David tells Kendall that Daryl told him he had something to tell them, and Kendall says, he didn't mean to hurt Art, um, but it happened so fast, and Raylan isn't happy uh, with the development. Um, basically, you know, it, it's pretty, that was a pretty big thing, you know, that Kendall was involved with this as well, so. Um, I definitely thought there was a very powerful scene, and I just, I really enjoyed that scene for some reason. I don't know why, but I, I enjoyed it. Um, Kendall tells him he drove himself to Allison's, and David asks where he got the gun, and he says it was Danny's, and he just came to talk to Allison. This is a great scene, by the way, because, you know, here, um, Kendall actually reveals to him that he knows, um, you know, what actually happened. That Wendy is actually his mother, um, and he asks why he took the gun with them, and he says the law has been hounding them for years, and they put his Uncle Danny down like a dog, and he says he went to the door, but when he reached for the doorbell, the door opened, and he saw the same star as the man that killed Danny, and Kendall says he didn't want to hurt anyone, but just didn't want, um, his mom to die alone. Definitely a very powerful scene. I really enjoyed that scene a lot. I thought it was really, really well done. And then the very end of the scene, we finally have our long-awaited conversation between Raylan and Daryl, um, you know, for, for this episode, that is. We've gotten, you know, stuff from them before, but this is a very big scene. And Raylan comes to talk to Daryl, who says he's grieving, and he shouldn't be bothering him. And Raylan tells him that he believes he want, he went to Allison's to use the hammer to draw him out. And then he says he got chicken shit after he saw who he shot, and then convinced Kendall to sacrifice him to save him. 
And Daryl says Kendall will be out of juvie in a few years. And but Raylan says it will charge him. Um, Daryl asks if he's going to kill him, and Raylan says he won't. He wants to, but he won't. Um, I definitely thought that you know there was again there was a big reveal that Kendall was actually the one that shot Art. That was definitely a great reveal. I really liked the unpredictableness of it all because if Daryl did, it'd be way too predictable. Kendall's doing it though, definitely a lot more powerful. Um, I, I enjoyed that a lot. So, um, Raylan tells him that he had the web of BS he spun is going to be used to destroy him. And Raylan tells him that when he's done with him, he's going to wish he had put a bullet in his head. And Daryl says it's that case, that it's only case a time will tell. And then Raylan asks how much he thinks he's got left. And Raylan comes to the hospital, and then, um, that's how their conversation is. Then at the very end of the episode, Raylan comes to see Art. He sees Art still out. He stares through the glass at him. And he turns back around, takes a seat, and gives the other marshal guarding the room a break. And he looks very pensive and distraught. Probably because he's thinking, um, you know, this marshal's replacing him. And he kind of feels bad for what he did now. And I'm thinking if, uh, you know, I actually thought they were going to kill off Art. But I don't know if they're going to. But um, I think if Art wakes up, definitely Raylan is going to go back to being a U.S. marshal. Because he realizes what I did was a mistake and I should not have done what I did. Um, now let's go to Boyd. Boyd's plot, of course, very, very interesting. Of course, I love Boyd's plot in this episode. Um, so let's just get to it. So Boyd counts money to a hooker that attempted the guard away from him, and she asks if he got what he needed, and Boyd says no. She tells him it's a shame that he didn't get anything for his money, and offers him a little something more. Boyd looks her up and down, and then walks away to take a call from Wynn. He agrees they need to get together to talk. Boyd hangs up the phone, and uh, tells Terry that he has to call tonight. And she takes his hand and offers him his services, her services again. He tells her he appreciates it, but does take a cigarette she offers. Um, so then Boyd comes to see Wynn and Picker, and we get a lot of scenes. Also, we saw that Boyd tells Jimmy that uh, he had to explain to Wynn that he lo how, the, how they lost half the shipment. And Boyd tells the sidekicks to hide the drugs where he doesn't know, so he can use it as a bargaining chip in case they don't want to um, let Boyd walk out alive. And they offer to go with him, but he refuses, and he says if, south, if he goes south, they need to take care of Ava by giving the nurse at the prison the heroin she wants, and they promise, and he tells them to hide the heroin, where God himself couldn't find it, and they agree and head out. So it's still, you still see that Boyd does care about um, Ava, I think he always is gonna. Um, so Boyd goes to see Wynn and Picker, and Mike checks him for weapons, he's clean, but Picker says to check him again, and Boyd says Picker must be calling the shots, and Boyd says he left all his weaponry at home. Catherine comes in, and Boyd stares openly. Mike finds smokes on him. And Wynn says he didn't know he smoked, and Boyd explains he's got a lot of stress on him. And I didn't think Boyd smoked either, but he did a lot of it in this episode. And um, Boyd sits and Picker asks how Raylan ended up with half the shipment, and Boyd says that's a question to ask Daryl. And he said he thinks that Daryl also likely shot the marshal, as we know he didn't. Um, Boyd tells Picker that he only explains things um, to his mother, but he's not his mother. Um, Boyd answers that shit happens, and they ask about the other half. And he tells him he doesn't know where it is. They ask him what that means, and he says if they kill him... It's like they buried the dope with him, and Catherine asks him to tell him about um, him, and she introduces herself. Her husband was a famous dead guy. He tells her he's seen her photo, and she explains that Wynn brought her there to meet him, and you can hear faint sirens in the distance. And then all of a sudden, you know, she says she's there um, to tell Wynn if there's a reason he shouldn't kill Boyd, and Boyd says he's going to have a cigarette while they chat, and Wynn says, tells him it's a non-smoking room. But then all hell breaks loose out of nowhere. The U.S. Marshals kick in the door, order them all to the ground, laying on the floor, and Boyd tells Wynn that they must take that non-smoking policy pretty seriously. Kind of funny there. Um, kind of funny scene there. I, I enjoyed that. Um, so then what happens? Um, and then we see that um, the meeting between Boyd, Wynn, Picker, and Catherine resumes. Boyd says the conversation they need to have. Uh, Catherine asks him to resume, explain why he should live. And Boyd says that that, remind, says that reminds him he was about to have a cigarette. He lights up and says he doesn't owe her an explanation. Wynn says that won't make him whole. Uh, Picker says the Mexicans are furious. And Wynn loses his patience with Picker. You know, really cool scene, really great scene from Wynn. Finally, Wynn Duffy has something to do. Wynn loses his patience with Picker, who wants to mail Boyd's head in a bag of, uh, south of the border. So basically, Boyd is on the verge of dying at this point. He really is. Um, he, people want him to die. Um... And, uh, Boyd offers Picker a, a, a cigarette, he presses a button, tosses the pack to Picker, looks at it, goes off, and Picker's chest is shredded, and Picker is dead. I, that scene came out of nowhere, and I thought that was actually very well done, but that just came out of nowhere. And, uh, he tells when the other half, the offer of his half, of his half, um, still stands. 
The other half of his half of half of his half still stands. And he walks out, and Catherine orders Mike to lock the door. So clearly, you know, they want to kill Boyd, and uh, they're not going to because you know they can't kill off. I I don't think they're going to kill off Boyd Crowder, but you never know. Um, and then Ava. Ava did not have much to do in this episode. Barely, she didn't even need to be in this episode. And um, honestly, I wasn't as into it. However, I really was into the beginning of it. Um, Ava is scrubbing the blood off her hands in the bathroom. Rinses out the sink carefully as Penny comes in with a towel for her. She dries off. They leave the bathroom together. They creep back to the bunks. Ava has a wound on the side of her face. The alarm sound and all the women drop to the floor in a, pr in a prone position. Um, that was actually a very cool scene here. And Penny tells Ava she's got a blood spot on her arm. And she wipes off on a blanket. The guards come through in full riot here. Penny asks what's going on. The guards tell him the next one that talks to it's a week in the hole. And Ava looks at Penny um, tensely. So then um, Penny and Ava chat a meal. And she tells Ava that the search came up with nothing. And she says their best hope is that other people also wanted Judith taken out. And Ava says if it's her last meal she should enjoy her ice cream. A handful of other girls come over to their table. Ava freezes up. One by one, they drop their ice creams by Ava's tray. Um, so it turns out Ava's got some street cred of her own, possibly. So that's all we got with Ava in this episode, though. Overall, though, really great episode. Next week, it's going to be huge because finally, um, Boyd is going to meet up with Raylan, and their stories are going to connect. And next season, it's going to be Boyd versus Raylan, which is going to be amazing to see. Let me know what you guys saw this episode. Is Raylan going to go back to um, art? I think he will. Um, is Boyd gonna die? I don't think Boyd's gonna die yet. I don't think they'll actually kill him off. Um, is Ava gonna die? I've, I'm thinking Ava might die this season. I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. Um, what's gonna happen there? Or is Win Duffy gonna die? I'm thinking Win Duffy will probably die since he wants to kill Boyd. Whoever wants to kill Boyd usually dies, so he's probably gonna die. Um, that's it for my review. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in my next video, which will be my review for The Americans. So see you then. Bye.